I'd throw you a freshwater crayfish care video. More specifically, this one will be for a uh, Cherix Destructor. But, um, <clears throat> but most crayfish, most freshwater crayfish have the same general care rules. But uh, this one is going to be specifically for Cherix Destructor. In Australia, they call it the uh, common yabby. That's where they're from, Australia. Um, they can live about about five five-ish years, four or five years. Uh, minimum tank size for one for one crayfish for one yabby is uh, ten gallons. I wouldn't put one in any less than ten gallons. Uh, they can grow to about five, six inches, so ten gallons of space would be just enough for one adult. Now, I would not recommend keeping any kind of crayfish, especially Cherix Destructor, with uh, community fish. I wouldn't put any other fish in there unless you expect them to be disposable. Um, they are quite skilled hunters. In the wild they will catch the occasional fish. The more, more of the slow, sick or old fish will be eaten. But uh, once they grab on they don't let go. So <clears throat> if you don't want your fish damaged or eaten I would just put them in the tank by themselves. So yabbies can handle a wide range of water parameters. But uh, that doesn't mean that they can have poor water quality. So do your water changes just like you would do in uh, any aquarium with fish. About 15 to 20 percent a week change the water. They do like uh, well oxygenated water, so a bubbler is a good idea. They like plenty of little rock crevices, little places to hide. They are great excavators. They'll you can just throw a flat rock in there and they'll dig underneath it and make a little house under there. They will shed their exoskeleton periodically. They need to shed it to be able to grow. So they'll they'll kind of lay on their side, and right at the top of their uh, carapace will crack open, and they'll kind of shimmy themselves out. Uh, you don't want to feed them for about two to three days after they molt, because they will eat the uh, the exoskeleton that they've shed to gain more calcium and nutrients to regrow a new shell. So if you by not feeding them for a couple days after they shed it encourages them to eat their shell. So as for feeding, uh, yabbies are generally considered detrivores. Uh, in the wild they'll eat dead dec decaying plant matter, uh, but they're actually really a opportunistic feeders in, uh, in an aquarium environment. They'll eat pretty much anything that you give them. So you want to give them some good healthy foods. Uh, right now this is Snips by the way. Snips, uh, I feed them two of these Omega-1 pellets. These are uh, shrimp pellets. And uh, I do the algae wafers too. Try to give them all the nutrients that they need. Um, uh, you can feed them blanched vegetables like uh, like shelled peas, carrots, zucchini. Uh, they'll also eat earthworms, bloodworms, brine shrimp. Uh, they're really quite easy to take care of.
when it comes to feeding. Uh, yabbies are great climbers. They will. They actually seem to enjoy to climb things. They'll, if you put a little castle or something in there, uh, they'll climb on it all night. And uh, I actually find this guy up on top of that plant all the time. So as for my setup, I have snips here in a, it's a standard 10 gallon tank. I've got about two and a half inches of sand there. Sand is one of the best substrates for uh, any crayfish really. It's easy for them to dig in and they can excavate it as much as they want. For our filtration here, I have the AquaClear 30. It's a 30 gallon filter on a 10 gallon tank. There's, inside, there's three layers of, fil of uh, filtration media. There's a sponge on the bottom, then there's a layer of carbon, and then the layer of Biomax. wide range of temperatures too. I like to keep my tank in the low or the upper 70s but it can drop way down into the 60s and they're still fine. They grow faster and they seem to be more active in a little bit warmer water like closer to 80, 77 to 81 degrees is ideal. Snips here was bought from uh, PetSmart. He's, uh, you don't really expect a lot of the animals that come out of there to be super healthy. But I got him at an earlier stage, I guess. They must have just got him in because he's pretty good. He's just missing the end of one of his uh, antennas there, one of his feelers. But other than that, he's in pretty good health. Um, they sold him under the title. Uh, Australian Blue Lobster, which is the same thing. It's a uh, common yabby. They are great escape artists. Um, if there's any gaps or holes in the lid, they will figure out a way to get out of it. So you want to make sure it's good and good and sealed up. So it can only survive out of the water for a couple minutes. If, they're, uh, if their gills aren't getting wet, then they're, uh, they'll suffocate. So they don't live too long out of the water. So just make sure there's no way to get out. They do. They swim backwards really fast. They use their tail to power them through the water. And on occasion, if you have no lid on the tank, they will shoot themselves right out of the tank. So make sure you got a good lid on there. A good lid on the tank for these guys is a must. Uh, another thing I wouldn't put more than one of them together unless the tank is very large when they're right after they molt their skin is very very soft and if you put two of them together they one will wait for the opportunity to attack the other one right after it molts and it doesn't stand a chance um, all in all they are Extremely easy to care for, super interesting to watch. If you're looking for a pet for your 10 gallon tank and you're not into the whole community tank thing, or little tiny tetras and 
stuff like that, these guys are a great option. Alright, so there you have it. Uh, if I've missed anything, just leave me a comment, let me know. Yeah. Common Yabby, Cherix Destructor. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one.